excited for a show because even before, by the way, hi, I'm Chef AJ and welcome to Chef AJ Live. Even before I was doing this daily live show, I had been asking my guest to please just do a video with me because I love his food so much. I love him so much. I have such respect for the chefs in my field, especially because I produced a conference for many years called Healthy Taste of LA, which involved working with lots of chefs. And I got to see their the caliber of their professionalism and their cuisine. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know this next chef, you want to have him on your radar. Because I'm not just saying it. He literally is one of the best, plant, I don't want to say the best because I love them all, but definitely one of the best plant-based chefs in the universe. He's a classically trained chef. He's He ha does chef and has chef for everybody in Hollywood. It's like a who's who, but his food is so good. And believe it or not, he is the reason I became a pastry chef. After graduating culinary school, I didn't want to be an executive chef because when I met him, he was the pastry chef at a restaurant on Melrose called M Cafe. And he actually wrote a book about all his desserts. He even signed it right here for me. And I was so inspired by what he could do without using refined sugar and of course vegan and, and uh, he, he's just amazing. And then he went on to open two very successful restaurants, one casual dining, one fine dining restaurant. And then he wrote another book with his wife and he's just like the best. When I was accepted to be on the show Cupcake Wars, I could have picked anyone to be my partner. And I felt bad because, you know, he should have been the main one, but I'm the one that got us on the show. And he's just, I love him so much. And I've been asking him for, I don't know how many years to do this. Please give a hearty welcome to Chef Eric Lachasseur. Thank you, AJ. Um, so how many years have I been asking you to make Pad Thai? It's been many years. And sorry, I keep always postponing and say, well, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And, you know, I get always busy with different schedule. So finally, I said, okay, it's time. Let's put a date and let's just make it happen. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So and please, you know, talk, tell, if you like, you can share your story first or you can make the recipe first. But uh, let, let people know who you are because I, I don't know if everybody does know who you are because you don't, you know, you, you're, you're working as a chef. You're not doing videos like this. Yeah, you know, I, I cook privately for so many years. Even though I opened a restaurant, I went back and forth between restaurant and private. Uh, but, you know, I've been in the business for, you know, 30 years. And, uh, you know, I've been trained French chef. And, you know, of course, I was cooking the whole meat and dairy for so many years. And when I moved to LA, when I moved to California and uh, Nets and I, my wife, uh, we changed the diet totally. We went, you know, totally uh, vegan. We changed to plant-based diet. And from there, things happen. You know, I, I got calls coming in and, you know, first I cooked for a few people around privately and then cooking for Madonna, and then from Madonna to another one, and another one, and you know Leo, and uh, did things retreat in Italy, and Toby, Toby McGuire, back and forth, you know more more than once. Uh, sometime you know after a few years, I was okay, I got to do something else, and that's how I opened a restaurant. That's why I did M Cafe, um, and working on the books. But overall, you know, I, I stick with uh, private private chefing, which is, you know, a lot of demand here in in California and Los Angeles. Yeah. What do you like the most? Do you like being the private chef? Do you like being the cookbook writer? Do you like being the restaurateur? What what do you prefer? Well, restaurant, it's always, you know, it, it's always so nice because, it, you know, that's what I, I was trained for. But also there's, you know, the stress is there. Uh, there's always surprise. And now this, this year, it's even a bigger surprise because I feel, you know, I feel for all the restaurant owner, you know, how much change they're going to have to do. And, you know, some they're going to make it and some they don't. And some they're going to have to open new, new style of business, which is, you know, uh, you know, every, everything's going to be new from now on. So who knows? what going to be the, the takeout or, you know, high-end restaurant, who knows, but it takes it's time. I feel, you know, I feel that it's going to be something uh, very special from now on for all the restaurators. 
you know, as heartbreaking as it was when your restaurants closed, I keep help, couldn't help thinking that right now it, you would not be doing well if they if you still had those two restaurants. Oh, totally. I know so many restaurant owners that they're very, very struggling trying to, you know, uh, even the 50% sales on the restaurant, it's not enough to, to stay open. So, you know, they have to figure out uh, a way to do it and cut it down on, on staff, cutting down on the menu, even though, you know, uh, crossroad in, in LA, I mean, which is, you know, they're doing their best and trying to put new menu and allow it to go. So who knows what's going to be happening, but I'm, I'm confident that all those chefs out there, they will, they will come with something uh, very interesting. Well, if you know any of them, tell them in the meantime, if they want to come on the show, I'd be well, I'd welcome them to, uh, yeah. to, to well, do I'm, that. I actually I'm got in touch one of them. You remember like like 10 years ago at Healthy Taste, all the old chefs, I just got in touch with one of them. Remember Rachel Carr from Crew? I found her and yeah. she's going to come on and I'm trying to find David Anderson. But when I texted him, now it's his son's phone. So that's great. Well, Dina Marie, I'll ask him this, but I don't know if he's allowed to say who his favorite celebrity is. Uh, I, you know, to me, it's, it's work and I don't get involved with, you know, their private life usually. That's why I stick around with them so many years because you know I keep as a business. Me, I'm there for cooking and whatever happened around, it's not my, you know. I'm Darn, so, so we're not gonna get any dirt here, too bad. You um, know what I love about you, Eric, is you're so versatile because you are able to be not a, just an executive chef at a restaurant, but you, you were also a pastry chef and many chefs either are one or the other, not both. Uh, yeah, because you know it takes time. I mean, making making pastry, it's it's one thing by itself. You know, you know how much time you spend just to make pastry because there's a lot more steps. There's a lot more prepping and get ready for for your cakes. So you know whatever the the pastry style you're doing, but you know pastry it's uh, it's it's pretty intense also. You know. And also like you're also what I like is I'm not going to mention names, but there are certain vegan restaurant chefs that if you have dietary restrictions, not, you know, just because you really do, they're like no substitutions, but you're able to cook no oil. You're able to cook, you know, you're able to accommodate people. Yes. Yes. I mean, that's, that's what's the, the thing about the books that when I update the, my, the pastry books, I change a lot of recipe, you know, instead, instead of oil, instead of this, I, I totally change and make it like, even today, I'm going to give you a few ideas of what to change, but you know, today there's not even, you know, like as a request, no oil, uh, I didn't, no sugar. I mean, I didn't even use the salt, you know, so we, we on the track for something interesting. That's great. Well, you have a lovely wife, Sinai, who's also written two books, who's going to come on the show a little bit later on for, for her own episode. But when did you guys decide to change your diet? Was it about 20 years ago? Uh, it's more than 20 years now. I mean, 26, 28 years, 28 years ago. Totally. Uh, well, it happened because Sinai had a health issue and we had to, to make a big change. And that's why, you know, what she decided to do microbiotic uh, diet, which is a plant-based, you know, also. Uh, and from there, you know, I step in, you know, I have my own health issue. I have a lot of eczema, which uh, I was taking medication and taking cortisone shots. And, you know, she kind of put it out there, like if you change, your diet too, you'd be okay. And, you know, I went with it and uh, one day to the other, I just changed totally. And it took about three months to see the result. And that was it. I never had any uh, problem after that. So it did, it did make a big change, you know, for me. That's great. Well, Dina Marie says your skin looks great. And Gina wants to know, do you like the challenge of creating vegan clean recipes? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, every every chef, you know, they need the challenge to to keep going, to grow. You know, if you do always the same thing, you're not going to grow. And you know, uh, the vegan the vegan word went, you know, very very quickly, you know, to uh, 
a higher direction and not just, you know, just plain vegan, but raw food and, you know, things come and go. But overall, I mean, you know, most of the market now, the vegan option is so big and most of the restaurant, you know, in, I will not say everywhere, but for sure in LA or in California, in each restaurant, each menu, you have vegan option on everywhere. So no matter what, it did make a change, you know, on, on the people. And people now more, pay more and more attention to what they eat and the quality. And uh, I will say, you know, even with this pandemic, you know, going, I was still going to the store, you know, three, four times a week. And even though, you know, there's no more on the shelf, the vegetable section is still there and beautiful, you know? So we had plenty of choice on all the vegetables, which, you know, people rush for canned food and pasta and tomato sauce and, you know, whatever was quick and the freezer section, but the, the fresh vegetable was all there. Yeah. So there's no panic for that. So Lucky. People now they realize when, when, they people, are... when people ask me who influenced me as a chef, I point to you. Did you have any culinary influences? Uh, gosh, yeah, when I was a kid, yeah, my mom, <laughs> my mom and my grandmother, you know, they are both, you know, cooking and we always, you know, we never really went out to eat at the restaurant much, you know, maybe, maybe once a month, you know, we went out, you know, for a restaurant, but we always ate home and uh, we ate a lot of variety of food, you know, my mom was a good cook, so, you know, things that, you know, we as a kid, you can even imagine what, you know, I was eating because uh, quality was always there, you know. So I'm, I'm amazed that because of that, I knew, I knew the good food. I knew so many styles of cooking. And that's because of my, my mom and grandmother that I think the, the direction I took, that's what uh, made me today as a, as a chef. Yeah. Uh, Janet says, where did you grow up and did you always want to be a chef? Uh, I grew up in Canada. I grew up in Quebec by the uh, St. Lawrence River. So as I grew up, we ate a lot of seafood uh, summertime. And uh, it was, you know, part, part of the area where I grew up. But I... I didn't want to be a chef. No, <laughs> that was not until maybe I was just 16 or 17 uh, when I was in college. I, I wanted to be uh, working on, on the boat. I want to work on navigation. I want to be like a truck driver. I want to just get, you know, somewhere always. And what happened is, uh, you know, my mom was working in a restaurant and, you know, I was always, you know, part of like, I was a dishwasher the weekend or the night, you know, uh, when I turned 14. Uh, after dishwasher, if the restaurant was so busy, I helped for salad, I helped prepping stuff. So I was doing it already without knowing that, you know, this is what I want to do. It was just for me, you know, as a teenager's weekend job, you know? Yeah. And when I went to college, I realized, wow, I think, you know, I think I'm so good at cooking because you know, all my buddies come to my apartment on the weekend to eat, you know, late night food, you know, after we went out. So I said, well, I think I gave a shot, you know, and when I went to cook in school, I mean, the first, the first week I was there, I got my nickname already. It was a sous chef, you know, by the whole, my teammate at the school, I was just stabbed you know, like, this is the sous chef because, you know, you don't, you don't uh, argue with him. You just do what Eric says. Otherwise, we oh. go to trouble. So my, my time at the school was very good. I had, I had a lot of fun. And uh, before even I finished my cooking school, I was already hired by a restaurant. So, you know, that's how it started. And from then, from Canada, I start. you know, I, I want to travel so much. So... I applied for the Club Med as a chef, and this is what happened. I just traveled to the Caribbean and South America and in Europe, and I did that for many years before I moved to LA. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so Louise wants to know if you have a favorite herb. Uh, I love tarragon. 
Yeah, tarragon is one, you know, of course, basil and thyme, but tarragon, uh, it's something that not too many people use. And the, the aroma and the flavor and the little bitterness of it, that's, I love it. I love that. That's one of my favorite herbs. G Gisela says, do you cook every day from scratch or do you batch cook too? Uh, pretty much every day from scratch. Yeah, every day from scratch. And, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm good in the morning. I do a lot of work in the morning. You know, when I go, I go at uh, my client's house, first thing in the morning, I can do the whole prep lunch and dinner in the morning in a few hours, you know, soup and sauce and the prep, uh, you know, whatever the dishes. So by the time they're ready to eat, it took me sometime like five minutes, just finish it, warm up and the lunch is served, you know, and same thing for dinner. I like to be efficient. I don't wait like just an hour before lunchtime and start doing something. It's, I'm, I'm already all ready for my day. Wow. Do you, do you make different things every single day at your job or do they like to eat the same thing over and over? No, I do, you know, kind of the menu I do, it's like one lunch, it's going to be Mexican. The dinner is going to be maybe Indian. I do Italian, another lunch. And then uh, the dinner is going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be like more French style or, you know, steam artichoke and three, four dips and side garnish, but I always change, you know, me Mexican a couple times a week and then Italian a couple times, you know, I just uh, mix match, making sure they don't get always the same thing. Do you come up with the menu or do they say, hey, I really want pad thai tonight? No, I come up with the menu always. And, uh, you know, at one point I was making menu for the week, but, you know, before the whole things happen, you know, shopping was kind of difficult. So I didn't make any menu. I said, whatever I find at the store, we just make it up every day. So that's what happened. I start doing that way and uh, they kind of like it. You know, it's kind of a surprise, like, you know, what's for lunch today? What's for dinner today? <laughs> and, you know, I always make three or four items. So they're the one decide, okay, I just want the soup and rice and this. So I just want the greens and and the, the pad thai and the baked tofu, you know? So they have always a choice of three or four items. Do you, uh, do you serve it family style or do you plate their food? Uh, it depends. If it's only for a few people, I plate it. And then if it's more than that, I do a family style on the table and they just serve themselves. Yeah. And do you make dessert as well? Uh, not much dessert. No, uh, not anymore. I used to do dessert a lot. And then it's a no more sweet. You know, if we want, we get something or we ask you. But other than that, almost almost no more dessert. Wow. Yeah. That's why they, that's probably why they're, they're so healthy. Do they know that they have Eric Le Chasseur as their chef? Or do they take you for granted? Like, do they know, like, that people would just be, go crazy to have you as their chef? Well, you know, I think that, you know, they were... You know, they know me for so many years that, you know, uh, it's not like, I think when I'm away for a week or so, sometimes when I take time off, they're so happy I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> they realize, oh my God, you were doing so much. <laughs> we right. need you to stick around, you know. That's great. Stephanie uh, says, do you prefer fresh or dried tarragon and other herbs as well? Oh, fresh. Yeah. Fresh, always fresh herbs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Dina Marie says, did you ever work for Holistic Holiday at Sea? Didn't you do the pastries there one year? I did. Uh, yeah, I did one year the pastry. I forgot which year was it. And I did uh, work on the cruise also uh, doing cooking class. We did that also one or two, a couple of times. Yep. We did a couple of times. So we were on the cruise uh, three times. Yeah. Right. It's hard work on the cruise, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Doing the pastry, it was, you know, quick story. It was a great, I, mean, I would say 16 hours a day, 18 hours a day. And, you know, the first couple of days, we get okay. And, you know, on the cruise, they were giving uh, a personal birthday cake, whoever they had birthday, you know, during the week. Each night, you know, they said, okay, tonight we get two birthdays or three birthdays. So I'm the one who was making the birthday cake. 
And when people realized that I was the one making the cake. It was everybody's <laughs> birthday every single day. Yeah. So by the end of that week, I had so many birthday cake to make. It was just like, wow. Like, but, you know, that was a good experience. And as much as I wanted to work on the on the boat and on the, the, the ship before, I said, uh, I'm so glad I didn't make that choice because uh, it's yeah. very, very- It's really hard. If, if people don't realize it's so much harder when, the, when you're on a moving vessel than it is on dry land. So let's see, uh, Hornsby says she loves tarragon. What do you use it for? And Janet says, you get your spices from the store or online? I just get from the store. We just get from the store, but also, uh, my wife and I, she, we have a roof garden and she plants a lot of herbs. So when I cooking, I just go up on the roof or on the front porch and we get fresh thyme, fresh basil, uh, fresh oregon. Uh, you know, I pretty much we get from home because we all... We have, we have scallions, so we, look at our beautiful scallion that uh, we grow on, on the roof. So I just pick it this morning. So we have a lot of, you know, uh, herbs, fruits, you know, we have a, this behind me, this is our orange and pomelo. Look, look at this thing. Oh my God, that's as big as your head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. So yesterday I made juice. It's good for juice, actually, for dressing. So I just juice up, put a little sea salt to keep it to keep it longer and keep it in the fridge when I need uh, lemon juice or something. It's perfect. That is amazing. Um, Gisela says, do you do you work close to home? Do you have to travel far to get to your cooking job? Uh, no, it's just about eight miles. So, That's good. Yeah. Eight miles, and uh, it's it's. I'm so glad because I don't like to be in the traffic in the morning and at night. So for me, it's perfect. You know, yeah. That's great. So you don't cook for anybody except your current employer, right? Like you're not you're not a food delivery service. In no, LA, right? not at all. I just cook full time, morning to night. So you know, I'm usually now it's a little better. Before it was seven o'clock. I start at seven, finish at seven. Uh, but now I do eight, eight to six. So that's, easy. that's better. That's, that's better. easy. Yeah. Because when you own a restaurant, it's easily 16 hours a day, you know? Right. So this is this is better for you. That's great. But even so, eight to six is still a, a long day on your feet. You're working. When you get home, do you make a gourmet meal or do you just have a bowl of cereal? Uh, I cook every night. So you, you well, cook all day and then you come home night. and make dinner? Yeah. But, okay. but not as elaborate, right? You, you don't do elaborate at home, right? I do. Look, I can, you know, we're going to cook rice, uh, you know, fresh rice. And then I maybe grill tofu, have some greens. And we made a kimchi already. So I use the kimchi and use that. And, and maybe something else, maybe a seaweed dish or something. So, you know, every night it's pretty much like that. Yeah. Uh, what, what's your favorite cuisine? It's Italian, isn't it? I, I love it all. But Japanese, it's very, it's one of my favorite. Japanese style cooking. And then, you know, I love Indian food. I don't cook much Indian food home, but I love Indian food. And also Italian, of course. I eat a lot of pasta. Yeah. Do you, do you and Sinai keep it like breakfast simple? Do you kind of eat the same thing for breakfast every day? Uh, no. I always make, for Sinai, before I go work, I make a miso soup. And I make a rice porridge for her. That's pretty much a staple breakfast. And me, I eat, I eat uh, you know, because I go work. So whatever I make for the breakfast, I'm going to have also after they finish. So I don't eat right away in the morning. I'm going to eat a few hours after I get up. Got it. Because I'm you not know, there for cooking. But, I, you know, I make, I eat waffles. I'm going to eat. Uh, scrambled tofu, I'm going to eat, uh, you know, uh, muslin, uh, granola, you know, I just, whatever, I eat pretty much everything. But the weekend home, I'm going to eat oatmeal and miso soup for breakfast. 
Great. Gisela says, do you have a favorite dish that you could eat over and over? Ah, wow. I have to, I need to ask my wife. <laughs> Maybe she know more. Well, the dish you're gonna oh, make today. No. You know, one of the dish I cook a lot, it's making curry. Yeah. Well, good. Maybe, maybe you'll come back in another month or so and do a curry, but I could say that the dish you're going to make today, I could eat over and over because it's so light and it's so fresh, especially because it's so hot where I live. It's, it's just, it's so delicious. Uh, let's see. Judy wants to know, how do you cook tofu on the grill? And Dina Marie says, do both you and Sinai eat macrobiotic at home? Uh, yeah, we do both eat uh, macrobiotic at home. Yeah. And how do you cook tofu on the grill? So tofu on the grill, I usually marinate it first. So I marinate it, you know, it depends, but usually it's going to be more Asian style. So I put some tamari, uh, a little bit of, of uh, oil, because otherwise it's going to stick on the grill. So a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, uh, a little bit of water to dilute it. And also I put some vinegar. So I put some balsamic vinegar. So that's what's going to caramelize also. So those three items, balsamic vinegar, tamari, a little bit of, of extra virgin olive oil. And then I just, I slice the tofu, I marinate it maybe for 30 minutes to an hour if I can. And then I just put on the grill. I'm so glad you, the to... grill, you know, the grill, there's a lot of space between. So I use like a mesh, a mesh uh, stainless steel grill also just to put on top. So it's very, very small hole. So it doesn't stick ready to, uh, to the barbecue. So if I do in a pan, I'm gonna do the same marinade, but a little bit more water. And I put on the pan with the cover and I just let it cook about 20 minutes. And I turn twice and just let it reduce. So the juice reduced totally until almost no more juice. And it's very, 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 it get almost crispy and very tasty. Well, I'm so glad you mentioned balsamic vinegar because I was going to ask you if you liked it because you get a gift for being on the show, two flavors of balsamic vinegar from my favorite company in your choice. So you're going to get to taste some really yeah, cool I didn't know. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, like th there's flavors like curry. I'm going to send you the list and you can pick whichever two you want. And I hope that you will like them. So uh, we, we I, d Charles said that when we were working on Cupcake Wars, meaning before we got on the show, we, you would come to my apartment in Sherman Oaks and we would practice. And he said those were the happiest days of his life because... <laughs> <laughs> I had more fun, more than being on the show, I had more fun working with you creating the recipes. Yeah, I think, you know, I think Charles, uh, he had a very sweet too. So <laughs> he, had, he had a lot to eat. Yeah, he loved it. We still have, still have pictures of how beautiful they were. So, you know, what I noticed about you and Sinai, you guys can eat, you guys don't eat much food. Oh, no, you're, you're totally wrong. We eat a lot. I just never, you just never, I don't know what to do it. You guys, I just love you guys so much. Would you like to uh, start the recipe? Yeah. So today, I don't know if you said what I was making today. Yeah, I, I called it Pad Thai Kelp Noodle Salad because I wasn't sure exactly how, what you exactly. called it. Exactly. So that's a Pad Thai noodle. Uh, and, you know, a lot of, Actually, even my client now, they were said, okay, I cannot eat rice anymore, nothing with rice, nothing with corn, uh, even the pasta, we had to change. So I said, oh, I got the perfect dish because, you know, the kelp noodle, it's, it's very crunchy at the time. And, you know, it, they're pretty long. So I, I love that, that thing. You know, I was using that a lot to, uh, when I had the seed bistro. I was using those noodles and I was making a turmeric coconut soup. And that was something very, very popular. And those noodles in that soup was just wonderful, you know. It takes it takes a lot of flavor and it's it's kelp, but actually you don't even taste it. You don't even know it's seaweed pretty much, you know. So and it's not that we have to always worry, but it is very low calorie. The whole bag is like oh it's very calorie. low calorie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very high mineral. So, you know, for all your, your nail and your, your skin, this is, this is a very, very good 
good dish, you know. And they actually use it at True North. So for people worried, you know, they do it at, the, at some of the salads at the True North Health Center. So if Dr. Lott, uh, Dr. Goldhammer says we can have it, we can have it. Yeah, and it's a great dish because you don't need to cook. So the summertime, this is, this is wonderful for this coming summer. Uh, no need to cook. You, got, you just need to make your dressing in advance if you want. You know, it's very easy dressing. And, you know, just mix the vegetables and it's, it's ready to go. So it takes, you know, it will take 10, 15 minutes just for you to finish this. So when I show you what I do with, with this uh, noodles, so it comes usually in a bag. It's about 12 ounce or 16 ounce. Uh, it's funny, the one I bought last Monday, it was a 12 ounce and now this is 16. So, you know, and actually this comes from gold mine. So this noodle, it's not even refrigerated. It's on the shelf. And uh, you just need to wash it first. So I'm going to rinse. And I'm going to show you. They're, they're very long. So I'm going to put it in a bowl right here. So you're going to see with the juice. If, if some of you never saw this, this is, you know. So some people like to cut with the scissors. But I like to keep it long. I like it like a spaghetti almost, you know, keep it like that. So I'm just going to rinse this under cold water and then uh, put it back in my strainer. So just give me a second. I'm going to go back and wash it. You guys are asking where to get the kelp noodles I've been posting. They sell them at Whole Foods, they sell them at Sprouts, and you can also get them online. If you like, I'll put a link in my Amazon store. If you well, I just put in a bowl, in a bowl with water, fresh water, and I'm just going to clean it up and open up with my hand a little bit and then just strain it. It looks beautiful. They yeah. also sell these on um, Eric. They sell these on Amazon for people that don't have a store that sells them. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, but you know, most of the store now they they carry it. I mean, even uh, Gilson or Ralph or they have those scalp noodle. I saw that before. So, so here's the noodle. So I'm just going to put this on the side, just let it sit. And also we have, I'm going to use carrots. So I said the noodle was like 12 or 16 ounce. So this is for like four people serving. I'm going to use a carrot, uh, maybe half a pepper or maybe a quarter. Cilantro, scallion. So this is fresh scallion. So two, one, you know, this one is pretty big. So usually two scallion or one, one if it's bigger. Uh, cilantro, garlic, ginger, and lime juice. So let me tell you the whole, the whole ingredient. So starting with the carrots. So I like to make it almost the same size of the noodle. So with a vegetable peeler, I'm going to peel. I'm going to move this a little bit. So you can see, I'm going to peel my carrots. So I'm making those, those ribbon, you see that? And with this, I'm going to slice with my knife, you know, sideways a little bit and making Those ribbon like this. It's so pretty. Yeah, so you know, you don't need a very expensive machine or slicer. You can just do with a carrot peeler and make on your slice. And then you just slice it with your knife. So that's just a uh, if you like to keep it just the ribbon, you can just keep ribbons like this too, you know, cut in half. But I'm gonna make it, you know. 
So this is just very colorful and uh, you know, it's still very cool and fresh. Where did you learn such great knife skills? I remember that time, I think you were in a motorcycle accident and your hand was practically broken and you yeah. still had better knife skills than most people. Uh, I don't know, you know, when you spend uh, 16 hours in the kitchen, so it, it's become, you know, I still cut myself sometimes. It doesn't matter if you go too fast, you can still cut yourself. So carrots, uh, I'm gonna do the pepper also the same thing. So it's about one carrot. I would say a half cup of red peppers, the bell pepper, and also, there we go. So I just put all this here in the bowl. I'm gonna put my bowl right here so people see better. And I'm using half a bell pepper. I'm gonna take the seed out. You know what, Eric? Um, well, I was looking through some old notes and I have the recipe uh, for seed kitchen pad thai salad. You did? Yeah, so if you want, I could post that in the show notes if that's okay with you. Oh, we had that recipe already? Oh, see? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it wasn't published, but remember when you served it for Healthy Taste of LA, it's the one with, you have tamarind paste in it, you have some brown rice syrup where they could use some date syrup. So I actually have an email from you with that oh, recipe. Thank you have it. See that? My memory is it's not too uh, too good. You know, I'm just, I live day by day and yesterday I already forgot what I did. So usually. <laughs> so yeah, you, if you, you got it, that's the perfect. So I put a half cup, it's about half pepper, you know, one, one half of red pepper in there. Uh, I also gonna use uh, cilantro. So cilantro, I love, I love cilantro. So I put, you know, as much as I can put. Some people don't. So you can just use parsley if you like, but I love cilantro. So usually I'm gonna use, this is, this is a small bunch. It's about maybe like a half a cup, but I'm gonna chop and also for the garnish, I put on the side, I just put all the leaves separately. So it's more like a garnish of, instead of chopping your cilantro. So I'm just gonna chop this cilantro. I love that you have a clear bowl that makes it so easy for us to see. Yeah, I just, I thought about you today about that. Yeah. Um, uh, Judy wants to know, what kind of knives do you use and recommend? I, I have so many knives. I keep track of it actually, but I like I like this one. Uh, this is more a high end knife. You know, you see the handle; it's pretty wide. It's heavy, but you know, I like I like the style. It's more like an Asian Asian style of knife. Uh, you know, this is designed by uh, you know I don't know. I bought a set one time, but uh, this was by Porsche. This is a Porsche knife. <laughs> it's so okay. funny. But yeah. Eric, but do you I, I have so many knives. I have the whole 10 inch French knife. Uh, I got the 12 inch. I got, you know, all the, all the knives. So I don't have specifically, you know, one kind. I just always, if I see something is good, I just get it. And, but I have a lot of Japanese knife also which is all in my suitcase when I have to go somewhere for, you know, something special. But otherwise, daily life, this is my, my knife in a drawer in the kitchen here, yeah. Do you uh, cook rice on the stove or do you use a rice cooker? Cook on a stove every day and I'm gonna show you how we cook it. Wow, so you don't use any machines like an Instant Pot or an air fryer, huh? This is, this is a Japanese Instant Pot. That's hilarious. Yeah, so I just soaked the rice actually this morning for tonight. So I soaked, I soaked the rice at the Sanai. You know, she always want the rice to be soaked so it, it's easier to digest. So I soaked the rice and I don't, you can see, but it's with the water, so I... And do you cook it in the water that it soaks in or do you change the water? In the water it soaks it. 
Well, I, I, that's a good tip. I didn't know that because I'm making rice for dinner tonight. I did not, I, I will start doing that then. If so you this can... is actually brown rice. And uh, so I use three cups, three cups of brown rice, five cups of water. And when the water, when it's gonna bring to boil, I put a pinch of sea salt. And you know, this is like a double cover when you see this. So the first one with the holes go on top. So it's like a steamer also at the same time. And th this is a double cover. So there's also a hole on this one. So the steam is gonna just come on one single and come out inside and come, in, come out as a one hole here. And Do you we, rinse the rice at all before you soak it? Yeah, yeah, we wash it. Wash it first. Wash and then uh, drain. Drain the rice and then put in this uh, cooker and then add the water and let it soak. So I did this morning. So we're going to cook tonight like six o'clock. So it soaks from like eight, nine hours. Wow, that's incredible. Do you so, ever eat white rice, they're asking? Uh, I eat white rice when I go out sometimes, or when I used to go out. Uh, you know, I, if I go to a Thai restaurant, I love to eat sticky rice. So usually it's only white rice. Did you have any favorite, yeah. res any favorite restaurants in LA when they were open? Uh, actually, yeah, well, my friend uh, Sadda, she's got a Thai restaurant on Lincoln here in Santa Monica and very, beautiful, great Thai food. And she do a lot of things that, you know, you don't find in any Thai restaurant. It's very specific. She do great appetizer. And it's one of my favorite uh, vegan place. Yeah. yeah. Eric, where do you get tamarind paste? Can you get it at the regular market? Uh, yeah, actually, I didn't find it uh, yesterday at, at uh, Whole Food. Whole Food is, we're having a hard time to get a lot of stuff in there. But uh, 801, 801, they add tamarind paste. Yeah, 801. And I think Co-op, they add it too. Yeah, in San, in, I mean, in LA. But if not, uh, you find this also in Indian uh, restaurant or, or Middle East restaurant. I, I, mean, uh, I mean, not restaurant, but the grocery store. Indian or Middle East work so so they all have tamarind paste. Nice. Are there any vegan chefs that we might have heard of that you like or follow or cook recipes from their book? Uh, frankly, sorry. Frankly, I don't follow already nobody. <laughs> I have no time to follow already, like, you know, people online. I don't, uh, my wife do that. She, she do, you know. I follow I'm, my I'm sure you know some, I mean, I'm sure you know Chef Tanya. I live near her. I'm oh, sure. yeah, I know Tanya, but I, you know, I kind of lost track of her when, also when she moved back to uh, your area where you are. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, online, I, I already follow nobody. Right. No, but I meant like, do you, like, is there anybody, you know, you particularly like that you maybe went to their restaurant? Like, I, I, can't, oh, I yeah. can't. I mean, when Tanya had her place, I was there so often, you know, I, yeah. love, I love to go to her place. Yeah, I mean, you know that was that was one of my outing. You know, go to to Tanya's place. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, Jana says you're so cute, and Colleen says you're funny. I'm funny. <laughs> I don't try to be, but it's just uh, you know we. It was very special when we used to do a uh, uh, show with you. Your event uh, was always me and, and Sanai pretty much on stage. And everybody you guys are hilarious when you're together. You're like you're a comedy duo. Uh, Laurel says, could you please say again the name of the Thai restaurant in Santa Monica? Is it a vegan restaurant or a, a, just a regular restaurant? It's a vegan restaurant. It's called Sabda, S-A-T-D-H-A. Hmm. That's and great it's, to know. it's on Lincoln Boulevard, like between, uh, if you need, like it's between Ocean Park and uh, Pico on Lincoln Boulevard. Good to know. I'm posting so your website, which is seedkitchen.com, in case people would like to get on your newsletter or look at, uh, purchase some of your books. Yeah, so it's seedkitchen at gmail. Okay. Yeah, dot com. And this again, we keep getting we keep getting tarragon questions. What do you do with tarragon? 
like the idea of tarragon. Uh, I like to do dressing. Yeah. Uh, dressings, uh, creamy dressing also. So if I do a creamy dressing uh, with tofu blended into it, I use tarragon. It's, it's got a very specific uh, taste, I, which I, you know, I love it, so. Have you ever used sorrel or salsify? I've never used either of those. Uh, sorrel, yeah, we have, we have actually, we have in our garden, we have sorrel, fresh sorrel. Yeah. What about, what about fenugreek, Alexi wants to know? Fenugreek, uh, not really, I don't, don't use that much, but I know Indian food, it's one of the popular ingredients, so yeah, fenugreek. Fennel. Fenugreek. Okay. Uh, we, have, we, have fennel, we have fennel in our garden too. We have a big fennel. It's like almost six, five feet high. It's taller than you. Taller than me, exactly. Just by two inch. <laughs> <laughs> You're delightful. <laughs> so let me uh, get back to this because I'm going to forget what I'm doing now. See? So we did cut the carrots. One carrot. We did the bell pepper, half peppers. Uh, chopped cilantro. I have this uh, bean sprout which is the whole bag. It's, it's usually about the six, is it six ounce? Uh, no, this is nine ounce, nine ounce bean sprout. So, and this is all organic. Huh? So also the bean sprout, usually you wanna wash on the cold water. You know, sometimes it, there's a little, uh, if it get wet, so you get a little smell of it. So I can just, under cold water, wash it quickly. I used to take cooking classes at Eric's house a long time ago. They were so fun. And mostly I came because he has like 10 dogs. They're all golden retrievers or labradoodles. And, and How many dogs you said? I thought like you had like 10. It seemed like you had 10. Maybe you only have five. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was my favorite part of the class. So here's the bean sprout. So we can add it the whole thing here. So I'm gonna mix all those vegetables. And then uh, the scallion. So this is a sunny scallion from the garden. We have a lot of, we have garlic, scallion, chives, and onion. And the onion, have be they become beautiful. They're about this size right now. So the scallion, I'm gonna cut uh, sideways. So what I do, I'm just slicing. So you see, I'm, I'm slicing sideways. It's hard to see maybe, but. So wh whatever the style, you can, you can cut it, you know, big piece or small piece, but I just cut it sideways because since it's pretty big, it's, if it's a small scallion, you can just cut in you know, like a hinge long and it'd be okay too. You make it look so easy, Eric. Dina says, I have a leak in my fridge. Can you provide a quick recipe off the top of your head? Leeks? Uh, well, you can make leek soup. That's one. Leek and potato. That's one of my favorite soup. And uh, you can grill also leek. Uh, so what you can do, you put, you know, you cut your leek in half. So, you know, the leek, you, you get the, the white part and the, the green part of the leek. You know, it's almost like this. So the, all the green part, you, you want to slice it a little bit, maybe halfway. You don't need to eat all that, that green. But you can use as garnish as onion also or scallion and cut in half and you can open up and put in a pan like in the sheets pan well you're gonna you're gonna have to wash between the leaves because the leak it get very dirty in the bottom of those uh the bottom part so you may have to open each one and wash under running water just to clean it up and when you cut it in half, put in a pan. Uh, again, a little bit, maybe uh, just water or bouillon, like a veggie bouillon. 
and wrap with aluminum foil and put on a barbecue or in the oven. So you're going to bake it. It's going to be very tender and very juicy. And you can just eat that with a side as a side with uh, said vegetables. I love the way you say bouillon. It's obvious your accent is real. Bouillon, yeah. See? Oh, man, guys, I don't miss LA, but I miss Eric and Sinai. Oh, I used to go to their house for dinner. And then also I'm going to use a red cabbage. Red cabbage just for the garnish, just for the, the top of the noodle. So we don't need that much. Uh, you can do also with your peeler, if it works. Very thin. I'm gonna show you this. This is just for like garnish to put on top when you finish, but I'm just gonna put on the side, a little bit in a bowl right here. I'm just prepping all my vegetables, okay? And then we're gonna also use uh, peanut. So if, if you don't like peanut, you can use almond. So you can crush almond or peanuts for garnish on your pad thai. So when I crush those peanuts, I don't want to do it with knives. So I just put in a Ziploc bag and I'm going to use uh, my rolling pan. Janet wants to know if you make your own broth or do you buy it? Uh, I just buy cubes. I just use a broth cube usually. Uh, but if I need to make my own broth, I'm going to use leek. So that's one of the things you can use a leek to make a broth. Leek, garlic, carrots, and celery. And a piece of kombu. So the kombu for the, the mineral. And you're just going to cook that broth to reduce maybe halfway. So if you put, uh, I would say 20 cups and you reduce to 10 cups or so, you know, either way. But you're gonna need a lot of vegetables to get that broth going. And then you can put in a jar and freeze or put in a plastic tub and freeze some. So you can use, you know, for, for a few months if you like to. So you don't need to make a new broth just for a few cups, you know? So when you make one, you make a big one and you can reuse, separate it. Dina Marie says, do you miss anything about Quebec besides the wonderful cold weather in the winter? My family. Yeah, I mean, all my family is in Quebec. Uh, and yeah, I miss, I miss the cold weather because, you know, I ski. I ski a lot, you know, I'm, I'm a winter sport, play hockey outside. I grew up play hockey outside all my life, you know, when I was a kid, there was no inside hockey. So we freeze our butt, you know, outside play, uh, play hockey or ski. But uh, I love the ocean. I love the water. And, you know, surfing now, it's really my, my one of my big thing. And it's helped me to stay, stay in shape and feeling good. Uh, they ask what kind of brand of the is, is the is the cube the bouillon cube. Uh, cube yeah there's I'm very specific about it cube it's going to be one brand and I think it's from uh, Swiss Switzerland and I'll show you oh no I you know I lived with a Swiss chef growing up and I bet I know what it's going to be when you show it to me I'm not sure the the Rapunzel you see oh, Rapunzel nice yeah that's my favorite. VG says, do you ever use green papaya? Yes, yeah, product of uh, Switzerland. Yep. Yep. Do you ever use green papaya in salads? Green papaya, uh, not really. I mean, I love papaya, but I don't really cook it, you know. I, I leave it to Thai restaurants. So when I go to Sada, we have a Thai papaya salad always. But I don't do it at home. So I have all my vegetables right here. So if you need to uh, an update, 
I got the carrots, the peppers, the bean sprout, scallions, and I did uh, cilantro and the uh, cabbage just for the garnish here. So vegetable size, you know, you put as much vegetables you like, you know. Uh, it could be a lot more than this, but I think for now, for four people, this is perfect. We get a noodle, and now we're going to do the dressing, which is, uh, if you guys want to write it down, uh, tamarind paste. So I'm going to put this all in here. It's about... Uh, one, I got my measuring spoon. Eric, that's not for four people. That's for one people. Oh, that's for one. It will be all. <laughs> for me, but for you, maybe. Okay, okay. You can eat all of this. Perfect. No, maybe two, two people, you know. Uh, so one and a half tablespoon. Put a little more. And then... Uh, coconut amino, so you can use either that or tamari. So this is about a one third of a cup. I'm gonna take this. Sometimes you know because it's pad thai, so coconut amino it feels it's it's pretty tasty with that. One third of a cup, and this you can use coconut sugar or date date syrup. So today I'm using the date syrup, just for you, AJ. Thank I you. I know you're a fan of date syrup. So date syrup also, uh, three, three tablespoons. Again, if you like it less sweet, you can use less. So either the date syrup or the coconut sugar, it's three tablespoons about. And you can use rice, rice syrup, or also maple. Maybe, you know, either one you like to use for that. The recipe I have from you for Seed Kitchen was six cloves garlic, two inch ginger, half a teaspoon crushed chili, two tablespoons brown rice syrup, two tablespoons tamarind paste, tablespoon rice vinegar, two tablespoons tamari, two tablespoons water, and a tablespoon paprika. That's the recipe I have from you. Uh, yeah, I did with that too, yeah. Actually, that's one of the recipes I was doing. I tried to make it simpler a little bit, this one. So now I'm using uh, one goose of garlic to this, and then one inch of ginger, which I'm going to chop also. So you can use chili garlic sauce or sriracha, which sriracha is so popular now. So everybody's making sriracha. So since I use already chopped garlic, so you don't need chili garlic. So I'm gonna use the sriracha. So it's about, you know, this is pretty spicy. So about a teaspoon, a one and a half teaspoon, something like that. If you like very spicy, then you can add it as you, you want. Okay. And then I'm gonna squeeze uh, a lime. So we're going to use about half a lime. So I'm going to use the other one for garnish, so fresh lime. Yeah. And I'm going to mix all of this. Again, this dressing, you can... Uh, just keep in a jar and keep in a fridge. So it's already ready. And you know, it's not gonna get bad. So I went, I went pretty high on the hot sauce. My wife's not gonna like me on that one. It's just too spicy. But with the vegetables, you know, spice go, go down a little bit. So I'm not going to mix the whole thing, but whatever we need. So what I'm going to do, 
And Eric, just, this is a this is a salad. It's to be eaten cold. You don't yeah, have it's eating cold. So I'm gonna just transfer all my vegetables here. So I can mix all the veggies. So I'm gonna use this like for one one serving. Add my noodle. So I'm using like you know one quarter. So you have to break sometime by hand. They're pretty long. Mm -hmm. And then dressing. So I need the, I'm just going to use this spoon. So it's about usually two, two tablespoon about for, for one serving. And oh. And you just mix it pretty well. That's perfect. I found this ball because you can see through perfectly. Hey, Eric, Laurel said if you could recommend a salt-free vegan bouillon. So I Googled it and apparently Rapunzel does make a salt-free one. Uh, yeah, they do have the salt-free. It uh, does have I oil do, in it, but it is salt-free. I salt -free. Like sea salt a lot. The salt-free... It doesn't taste is different, you know. It's it's all your choice, you know. Oh my God, Eric, that's so beautiful. Listen, I, it's only going to take about two hours in the car. If you wouldn't mind dropping it off later. So I put fresh cilantro, and I'm going to have a little bit of red cabbage on top, and all my crushed peanut of almond. And here's your pad thai. See. This is the kelp noodle pad thai. And is the kelp noodle raw? I will, well, I, you know, that's a good question. I mean, it, it, we certainly don't usually eat it hot. Let, let, let me look, is, is cause I see it in, in raw restaurants, is kelp and yeah, so I, I think it is, it is a raw item, yeah. It doesn't say, but yeah, kelp noodle, yeah. Because I used to go to the raw restaurant and I think they do, uh, the kelp was it? Hey, remember it's Chef? Good. Remember Chef Rashid from back in the day? Yes, yes. He's going to be coming on in July. Oh, so I think this is this is what you've been waiting for, AJ. It is so it's beautiful. Fun. I'm, you know what? We go to the store once a week during the sheltering, and I am believe me, I'm going to get all the ingredients for that. So there's also, if really you like peanut sauce, you can do this with peanut sauce. You know, uh, Eric, do you know that um, I come, I, I put a recipe on YouTube every Wednesday and I just came up with a peanut sauce that doesn't have peanuts and it's going to be on my channel on Wednesday. Wow. So I'll, what do you use it for? I mean, what, what's the substitute? Almond? Cashew? No, I'm using, I'm using roasted chestnuts. Oh, roasted chestnut. Because they're really, really low in fat, but they provide oh. the creaminess. Oh, it could be uh, actually macadamia nuts. Right, but I'm trying to keep it low in fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. And roasted chestnuts have like one gram of fat. Does Sanai uh, want to come and say hello to the people? Yeah, she's, she's around. And she can bring a couple of dogs. And we have, I have my, my big Nalu here. She, she's, a, she's a counter surfer. If I leave things too close. Nalu, Nalu come. Hi, Nalu. Up. See, this is my counter surfer. Oh my God, it's the cutest dog. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's really like, oh. So this is like, ooh, yes. She's almost taller than me. Hello. <laughs> yeah, and this is uh, Kai. Kai mean ocean in Hawaiian. They're so precious. You have such a beautiful family. Thank you, thank you. So, you know, I'm gonna take a bite of this. So you want to give me the chopstick? Just, just to make your mouth watery. I'm the one's gonna take a bite. Can I take a photo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually take a picture and send it to us and we'll put it on the, uh, with the email. Okay. Hmm? 
We could call this Labradoodle and Sea Kelp Noodle. Yeah. Wow, perfect. Your food is so good. So this is very refreshing. And you know, um, soon it's gonna be warm, very warm weather everywhere. So this is a perfect lunch, having this, this cup noodle. And if you like, you know, you can add some protein. So you can have a baked, you know, they already baked tofu and you can just slice or dice and add to this to extra, you know, extra protein. But as is, it's, it's very wonderful. Yeah. So we just got a question from Michelle. What do you feed your dogs? Are they vegan? I think I'll have Sinai answer that because that's going to be the subject of her episode. Well, I'm already soaking. So I'm making dog food every with Sinai every Sunday. And today I'm soaking my beans and rice to make the dog food. And so Sinai can, you know, talk about it when, I mean, in the next, in next show now she's what she right. as soon as she comes on she has a whole book about this guys and she is going yeah. to demonstrate how to make dog food so she'll be on sometime in july once she gives me a date we are yeah. fully booked from for june good 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 but you know we're making dog food every every week so i make a batch for the week so that's basically it's it's rice beans and uh, vegetables with that shred in a uh, in the machine. So she's going to show you how to do it, but we just shred it up, mix it up. So it's almost like, you know, I used to make burgers at the seed kitchen. It's pretty much almost the same, you know, <laughs> I'm making rice, beans, and the vegetable to make my home burgers. So, you know, for the dog, it's, it's almost what they are. So, but it sounds they, like well, your, your dogs eat healthier than a lot of vegans. Yes. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Eric, it's been so great catching up with you. And for thank you so much for making my favorite recipe. Yeah, you're welcome. And you know, if you're interested to get those books. Oh my God, you know who's on? Ryan Flegel. Oh. oh my God, Ryan, I've been thinking of you. Ryan, come on the show and talk about your whole life. Your, and your, oh my God, this is the guy that gave me my first break. He owned a culinary school in Santa Monica called Dick and Jane Cook Vegetarian in the year 2000. And he was the first person to give me a job. He took a chance on me. Ryan Flegel in the house. Amazing. <laughs> I love this. I created this Zoomunity and it's like, I can't stop because I see these wow. wonderful people, most many of the same ones every day. This is so wow. cool. You have an open invitation anytime you want to cook. I'll, I'll even bump somebody to get you back. <laughs> Great. Anyway, well, as, as Johnny Carson said to me, I'll say to you, this was certainly worth the wait because I have been after you for, I don't know, I want to say five years. Good. Uh, I Maybe not five years, but, you know, a couple of years for sure. A couple of years. Before you move. But That's what I was so going to say, if you're interested to have the book, uh, Seed Kitchen, you can order that directly. But if you contact us uh, by email on Seed Kitchen, then we can just uh, give you a discount. So no shipping charge and we can ship it free if you email us first. I'm going to put that in the show notes, Eric. Yeah. And guys... I cannot give you the exact recipe that he made up today, but I'll give you the actual one from the restaurant. You got to watch the video to get the exact one he did today. Okay. Uh, Nadesh says, such a fun show. Merci, Eric and Chef AJ. You're so welcome. So guys, don't forget to come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. We have another wonderful cooking demo from my instructor from culinary school, who's a wonderful chef. She now works at a resort in New York. Her name is Chef Alicia Ojeda, and she's going to be making some raw recipes. Let's see. Ryan says, we need to have you all come and visit us at our vegan hotel in the Virgin Islands. Maybe a cooking retreat here. That sounds great. Yeah, Virgin Island, perfect. I love, I love all the island. I love all the Caribbean. Yeah. All right. Well, we love you, Eric and Sinai. Can't wait to see you again. And thank you, my Zoomunity, for being here. Please come back at eleven o'clock tomorrow for another wonderful chef demo. Thanks again, Eric. Bye. Stay safe.